Good afternoon, everybody. I am April Watts with Magic 95.9, Baltimore's best variety of R&B. Welcome to GBMC's Facebook Live. Now, the voice is something that we use all the time, but we probably don't think a lot about it. But we're going to think about it today, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about it today with two incredible people. Joining me in the studio, we have Dr. Lee Axt, and he's the director of the Johns Hopkins Voice Center at GBMC Otolaryngology. Did I say that correctly? Correct. Otolaryngology. All right. And we have Marissa Sanders, um, and she is a senior speech pathologist. How are you guys doing today? Wonderful. Great. How are you? Thank I'm, you I'm here, and I'm very interested about this topic, seeing that I Great. use my voice a lot. All the time. <laughs> yes. So how does the voice work? So the voice box is that part of your throat kind of behind the Adam's apple in men. And, and there's cartilage there in women too, they just don't feel it as well. Mm -hmm. And you've got two vocal cords. And so those vocal cords open when you're breathing, but they close when you're talking. And you push air between the closed vocal cords and the flow of air between those vocal cords pushes them into vibration and that mm -hmm. vibration produces sound. So that's how we speak, that's how we produce voice. So what happens when a person loses their voice? What What is malfunctioning? So. Most often it's a vocal cord problem, mm -hmm. either that they're not closing well or they're not vibrating well, okay. maybe because they've got polyps or nodules or possibly something even worse like cancer or paralysis. Okay. Now, is that the same as a voice disorder? And can you explain exactly what is a voice disorder? Sure. So a voice disorder, as Dr. Axe was saying, um, could absolutely be a dysfunction of, the, of something in the voice box on mm -hmm. the vocal cords. It could be a lump or bump. Uh, it could also be a way that we're using our voice in not such a healthy manner. Okay. So a voice disorder is a bit more all-encompassing than just a lump or bump on the vocal cords. Okay. It could also be a disorder of perhaps even the breathing mechanism. Mm -hmm. Breathing is the powerhouse for the voice, so if right. something's going on with that, that could affect it. Who is at risk to develop vo a voice disorder? Sure. I would say um, primarily occupational voice users are mm -hmm. most at risk. So those are folks like yourself. Uh, yes, I know. Uh, teachers, attorneys, bartenders, mm -hmm. salespeople, uh, those kinds of singers, positions. maybe people, singers. Absolutely, singers, um, teachers, very high risk profession. So some voice disorders are bad luck. Mm -hmm. But if you use your voice a lot, you create more opportunities for bad luck. Right. So if you're in that school teaching for eight hours a day, where you can't be quiet, you have no choice but to push through, mm -hmm. even if you're not feeling at your best, you're putting yourself at increased risk. If you have to show up to work and use your voice on air, even if you've got a cold, even if you've got a flu, yes. even if you're not feeling well, you're increasing your degree of risk. So That's anybody can have a voice disorder, mm -hmm. but the people that use their voice a lot, they're more at risk than the rest of us. All right, and please feel free to chime in if you have any questions or any comments, because this is not just a conversation between the doctors and myself, but it's a conversation with you as well. What can people who are occupational voice users do to protect themselves or to guard against developing a voice disorder? Sure. Well, I'll start with teachers. So because teachers are most at risk, research shows that the best way to either prevent a problem or reduce a problem mm -hmm. is using amplification. So some schools, uh, if we just look at primary or high school or middle school, some have wireless capabilities where a teacher can wear a microphone. And okay. then the schools that don't, the older schools, uh, we recommend the teacher actually wearing a personal amplifier. So reason being is an amplifier preserves the voice. Mm -hmm. It can actually save the voice during the course of a day. Okay. And then speaking more broadly beyond teachers who may have the ability to use an amplifier in the classroom, what everybody can do is drink a lot of water. Vocal, cord, vocal cords, excuse me, like to be lubricated mm -hmm. as they vibrate to produce voice. So staying okay. well hydrated helps. Um, avoid trauma to your vocal cords. So, you know, if you're able not to yell, not to scream, try not to. Mm -hmm. And then pay attention to how your voice feels, how it sounds. If you okay. begin to sound rough and feel strained and feel effortful, if you're able to, that's a chance to try to, to kind of rein in the voice use, let the inflammation go away, mm -hmm. rather than pushing past the people that uh, are going to take a short-term problem and turn it into a long-term problem are the ones who don't listen to that little stop sign in their yes. head saying hey it's not working right take it easy and if you blow past that that's when you're creating risk for longer term vocal injury mm -hmm. okay now when we we've, we've been using the general term voice disorder mm -hmm. are there like some technical terms like what, what are the different types of voice disorders that people can develop sure so the most common would be vocal cord nodules uh so 
that's what we primarily see in occupational voice users, mm -hmm. as well as children. So I also treat uh, pediatric voice problems, and nodules are the most common. So what are nodules? Those are little calluses that form on the vocal cords from mm -hmm. kind of overdoing it. Mm -hmm. And the kids that are most at risk, we know from research, are boys ages 7 to 12 who play sports. They're yelling. So you can imagine, yes. All righty. And beyond uh, nodules, polyps are like blisters on vocal cords. They come from a sudden increase or excessive use. You're at a friend's wedding or a, or a party or out at a loud restaurant. You yell or scream just once. You feel something pop and you feel like your voice is lost. It may be that you've got a polyp. Uh, vocal cord cancers can occur. Smoking is a risk factor, wow. but it can happen even in the absence of smoking. Mm -hmm. Vocal cord paralysis happens sometimes after a cold or flu, sometimes after a surgery like neck surgery to your thyroid gland or cervical spine that puts okay. the nerve at risk for surgical injury. And then some voice disorders have perfectly normal vocal cords that don't have nodules or polyps or paralysis. But as Marissa said earlier, people are just using them wrong, and that's where a voice therapist, a speech pathologist, can be extraordinarily helpful. All right, so that's basically who we see if we should develop one of these. Oh, we, we have a question as well. We do, and actually it's my question. <laughs> and you, you brought up an interesting point. So children that are screaming, trying to cheer on their teammates um, during a baseball game, mm -hmm. you can hear after the game they're very raspy. Yes. Is there anything that we can do as parents to, <laughs> to make sure that... Well, you know, I always tell the, the kids I work with who are not on the field but off the field and, and are screaming that no one can hear you anyway so clap whistle do something else mm -hmm. all you're doing is hurting your voice box and then your performance the next day at school or what choir practice whatever you have might be affected uh, but hydration get plenty of sleep the voice box lives within the body so please take care of the body okay. and when you let's say you do have the occasion that you have to yell or scream then m voice rest afterwards might help a little bit Okay. And when you say voice rest, mm -hmm. what is a good amount of time to consider Oh, voice rest? that's such a great question. Everyone would be different. So I never <laughs> okay. tell people you need, unless there is a reason for it, uh, you have to rest your voice all day long. No, it's usually just take a nap with your mm -hmm. voice. So 10, 15 minutes here and there. Mm -hmm. The teachers that I work with, I say, every time you have a break, rest the voice. So that might be 15 minutes to 30 minutes. Uh, rest the voice before work, after work, and then before, you know, mm -hmm. as many times as you can in between. Okay, so I want to ask a personal question. Sure. I am an occupational voice mm -hmm. user, and radio is an unforgiving business, so I can't just take off because mm -hmm. I'm a little hoarse. Do you have some remedies, like just some quick remedies that I could use to coat my throat or to take care of my throat while I still do my show? Mm-hmm. Well, first, are you drinking enough water? Are you getting enough hydration? Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> absolutely, I'll be honest. Absolutely not. Okay. So okay. It's always the first, the first thing, mm -hmm. and it takes about two hours for our bodies to become hydrated. Mm -hmm. So keep that in mind. Then ask yourself, how much caffeine are you having? Because that's doing the opposite effect. A lot. It's dry. Okay. I love coffee. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just doing everything wrong here, okay. right? Okay. <laughs> um, so sorry. if you're not having problems, then you're not doing anything wrong. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, and you need right. to live your life and to tell everybody to drink water and not to drink any coffee is going to make for a lot of unhappy people. Okay. But when you're struggling, yeah, increase the water, reduce the caffeine. So hot tea is a no. Or tea's not bad. Herbal tea is better than the caffeinated tea. tea. Okay, Again, yeah, it's yeah. the caffeine that dries you out. Okay. Um, but a lot of it also comes down to how much you're using your voice. So that's the opportunity to really say, okay, I need to be on the air for however many hours today. Let me not be on the cell phone in the car on the way to the studio. Got it. Let me not go out for that loud, noisy dinner the night before. Got it. I need to wake up and be on the air tomorrow. And then ask yourself, how am I doing with technique? Mm -hmm. Am I speaking on residual breath without having remembered to breathe? Or am I sitting up straight and mm -hmm. using good posture and using my diaphragm, all these things that a good speech therapist, one especially who focuses on voice, mm -hmm. could teach you to help even on someone who's playing vocal cords get your best voice quality out. Good stuff. We have some comments. We do have some comments. Um, Linda says, I love the doctors and nurses and support staff at GVMC. They have taken good care of me on many occasions. We are very grateful. Awesome. So people are showing well, thank you, Linda. Lots of, uh, lots of love for you all. And Samuel says hello. And Beverly waved. So <laughs> hello, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for tuning hello. in. <laughs> what does evaluation for a voice complaint look like? Sure. Well, it starts with a physician. Mm -hmm. So prior to anyone seeing me, they need to have an evaluation by a laryngologist or an ENT. Uh, they have to have 
So we have to visualize the vocal cords to see in order to come up with a diagnosis. Okay. Yeah. So a visit to the voice center would typically include a number of things. Um, and visualizing the vocal cords is probably one of the most important parts of that. Mm -hmm. um, but it starts with careful listening. It's listening to the patient. What is going on? How long have you had the problem? What is the problem? Mm -hmm. A voice disorder might be I can't get loud, but it might also be I'm rough or that I can't hit my high notes or that my voice gets tired too easily. And each of those means something different to us in terms of what's going on okay. with the vocal cords. So what's going on? How do you sound? When we're asking you what's going on, we're not listening only to what you tell us, but what how, how you sound. sound as you tell us, because that gives us a lot of clues in terms of possible diagnosis. So it's careful history, careful physical exam, good listening to the patient, and then typically a look at the vocal cords. Right. And at a voice center like ours, we use a strobe light so we can actually study slow motion vibration of the vocal cords as somebody's speaking and really get good insight into the vibratory capacity of the vocal cords. And that's what makes mm -hmm. the, a laryngology practice a little different from a general otolaryngology practice. Okay. Um, so general ENT is good, that's a great start, but if you wanna really see how those vocal cords are vibrating, Ask if they're using a strobe light and find a voice center. Good stuff. Sounds good to me. We have another question. This question, actually, I was talking with Marissa before we started, and she mentioned people that have chronic coughs will often see her. Um, I just, if you don't mind telling a little sure. bit about that, I think that's really interesting. Yeah, so no one thinks that voice therapy, it's a bit more all-encompassing. Mm -hmm. So I specialize in chronic cough as well as some breathing disorders. So that is a part of voice therapy as well. Uh, and, but again, prior to seeing me, they would have to see a physician okay. for a diagnosis. And as a group, we also do some breathing complaints and we do some swallowing complaints. So we say it's the voice center, but really it's laryngology, it's voice box care. So all of those chronic cough, lump sensation in my throat, difficulty yeah. catching my breath, but mm -hmm. also talking and swallowing all are kind of wrapped into what we do together. And it's great that we can pursue both the medical and surgical and also the behavioral aspects of, of all stuff. of those issues because mm -hmm. we get to work as a team between the physicians and the speech pathologists. Mm -hmm. Yep, and it's good that it's all like right there at UVMC yes. instead of having to go to some other place with a referral, you know, yes. makes, yeah. makes a lot of sense. Yes. Um, can voice disorders be reversed? Certainly. Yes, yes. absolutely. I mean, it depends on the nature of the disorder, but, uh, but yes, paralysis, can recover and there are things we can do to support the voice quality while we're waiting for it to recover. Mm -hmm. Polyps can either be surgically removed or sometimes resolved with behavioral strategies and speech pathology and voice therapy treatments in the absence of surgery. Um, certainly laryngitis gets better. Right. You, know, you want to try, try to take care of your voice when you have laryngitis and mm -hmm. you know, be well hydrated and avoid excessive use, but the inflammation will go away if it's caused by a cold or a flu. So a lot of common voice disorders are certainly treatable to some degree preventable okay. and certainly able to be made normal again from a voice quality perspective. Good stuff. Now I've heard that some people use Botox to treat trembling voice. How does that work? So that's, uh, that's something that uh, is more of a laryngology question I suppose than a speech pathology yes, question. Yes, please. Um, because we do inject botulinum toxin Botox into vocal cords mm -hmm. and we do it for people who have spasmodic dystonia which is a spasm of the vocal cords together that creates a very halting, staccato-like speech, mm -hmm. but also patients who have vocal tremor. And the vocal tremor patients, Catherine Hepburn is the most famous example I can think of, um, often have trembling in their hands and in their handwriting and yeah. their face and the rest, but as part of that, they have a very shaky voice. Mm -hmm. And if you help a muscle not to move as much, you will diminish the amplitude of the shake, and voice may be made a little bit more quiet, but it's also made more smooth. And so that can be done chemically with Botox because Botox weakens muscles. Mm -hmm. You inject it into a forehead and you can't raise your eyebrows because those forehead muscles are weak. Right. You inject it into a vocal cord and the vocal cord muscles become weak. Mm -hmm. And that can limit spasm of the vocal cords and limit trembling of the vocal cords. How many treatments would a patient have to receive that to work? So the good news and the bad news of Botox is that it's it temporary. Okay. It does work. It absolutely mm -hmm. works. But the effects of the drug wear off. Um, depending on dose, typically patients will get two to three months of benefit from any single Botox injection, and then once okay. it's worn off, come back to have their next injection and then their next. Alrighty. Do you have anything else that you want the viewers to know? Um, Sometimes people yeah. ask, um, when is it appropriate to, to seek oh, good question. evaluation? Right. And so we typically say, if you're experiencing a problem for two to three weeks, then it's worth your time just checking it out. Okay. And I would add to that the, the reason we kind of have two to three weeks in, in our minds. And, uh, and if you're in the audience and your primary care physician, some of the guidelines that have been advanced by 
uh, various academies that focus on this have been about a month. Mm -hmm. And it's because beyond two, three weeks or four weeks, it's unlikely to be a self-limited virus anymore. Right. If it was a plain old run-of-the-mill cold, it would have gotten better by now. Mm -hmm. So at that point, we're wondering what else is going on. And you don't know if you don't look. So come find somebody who can look. Um, but you don't need to wait two or three or four weeks. A lot of our patients see us after two or three or four days or sometimes two or three or four hours. If it's disrupting your quality of life to that the point sense. where you think mm -hmm. you need to be seen, be seen. If we see a singer who says, I felt something pop last night on stage, believe me, they are running to us as soon as they can the next morning. It's not a two, three or four week process. So, um, you know, what I was going to say when you see somebody, when you feel like it's not working the way it should, mm -hmm. and uh, this is not a fancy diagnosis that, uh, although we do have fancy equipment to look at vocal cords, you don't need to have an MRI machine or a CT scanner or mm -hmm. laboratory tests done. It's not wondering whether or not you have high cholesterol. You know as you're talking, and you know as you're listening to your friends and your family and your colleagues who's struggling with their voice. And so if you're feeling like you're struggling with your voice to the point where it's interfering with your quality of life, check it out. Check it out. Because it may not be dangerous. Oftentimes it's not dangerous, but it can certainly be made better, and there's no reason to suffer. Makes a whole lot of sense. We have another question. How often, um, or how frequently, I guess, um, would you need therapy for a voice disorder, or how long of a duration would you have to It really with? depends on the diagnosis. I will say, in very general terms, I typically see people anywhere from three to six sessions meeting about once a week. Mm -hmm. uh, we know pretty quickly if voice therapy is going to help. It's not a long, drawn-out process. Okay. So for people that may have some more questions or just want some more information about, about the services that your department provides, is there a website that they can go to or a telephone number that they can call? Certainly. I don't know the website. <laughs> we'll post we'll it. Post we'll it. post it on okay. the, um, <laughs> on the <laughs> link. Feel free to email me directly. GBMC.org is a good place to start. And I'm sure also that if somebody did a Google search for Johns Hopkins Voice Center mm -hmm. at GBMC, it would bring up our homepage, which I think is part of the Milton J. Dance Center's mm -hmm. website. Awesome. Uh, the practice phone number is 443-849-2087. All right. Well, thank you so very much. This was very helpful to the viewers, but also very helpful to me personally. Our thank pleasure. You. Thank, you. Right. thank you. And we'll see you next month with Facebook Live for GBMC.